Hi, my name is Carrie Walker, and I'll be facilitating the Villages Health presentation on the importance of oral health. Please keep in mind that the information contained in this presentation is for educational purposes only and is not intended as a substitute for advice from your healthcare professional. By the end of this presentation, I hope that you will have a greater understanding of the anatomy and physiology of your teeth and gums how oral health can impact your entire body and quality of life, and how to overcome age-related challenges to good oral health. It is said that as we age, certain things can tend to fall by the wayside. Unfortunately, by looking at these statistics presented by the Center for Disease Control, the prevalence of tooth decay and oral health seems to be one of those that falls by the wayside. Nearly all adults over the age of 65 have had at least one cavity. One in five have untreated tooth decay. An even higher percentage of adults over the age of 65, two thirds have already have gum disease. Nearly one in five age 65 or older have lost all of their teeth. I believe that everyone would report that they should brush their teeth at least twice a day and floss, but clearly there is a disconnect based on these statistics. Therefore, let's take a look at the anatomy of our teeth and gums and gain a better understanding of how our actions and care impact the actual life of our tooth. The tooth is divided into two basic sections known as the crown and the root. The crown is what you see above the, the white portion that you see above the surface of your gums. The root is the part that you don't see below. The white portion of the tooth is coated by enamel and it protects the exterior exposed portion of the tooth from disease or any external irritants such as hot or cold. Enamel is one of the strongest surfaces in our body. It covers up the dentin. The dentin is the soft tubular layer. It contains little channels, as you can see if you look carefully at this diagram, that lead to the, the, uh, the nerve endings in the pulp. The pulp is what contains the nerves and blood vessels that connect the tooth to the rest of our bloodstream in our body. What I would like you to take away from this slide is the realization that our tooth is a living object contain, uh, composed of living tissues. What happens when things go wrong? Gum disease is a process that begins with the buildup of plaque. Plaque is a thin film of bacteria that builds up on your teeth. It can actually form only two to three hours after you've, you've brushed. So it's important to have a regular cleaning routine from your, for your mouth. If plaque is left on your teeth for an extended period of time, it can harden and become uh, hardened into tartar. Tartar is a substance on the teeth that cannot be removed by regular brushing and instead must be chipped off by a dental instrument, uh, by a dental professional. The presence of tartar creates inflammation in the gums. Gum inflammation is known as gingivitis. At this point, the gums become inflamed and bleed easily when you brush your teeth. However, the teeth are still firmly planted in their socks, sockets and no irreversible bone or tissue damage has occurred at this point. Periodontis or gum disease occurs when the inner layer of the gum and bone actually begin to pull away from the teeth, forming the pockets that you see here. Unfortunately, these pockets are even more likely to collect debris and become infected, kind of exacerbating the cycle. Both the toxins produced by bacteria and the good enzymes produced by the body's immune system to fight this infection begin to break down the bone and connective tissue that hold the teeth in place. Before I move off of this slide, I do want to point out again the connection of the blood flow, excuse me, the 
the blood vessels in this tooth to the overall blood, our overall blood system. This is how bacteria can move from our mouth into different parts of the body, as we'll see in later slides. Tooth decay is the gradual loss of minerals from the enamel. It takes place specifically when your mouth's pH falls below a level of 5.7. Bacteria in your mouth feed on the sugars. So as you can see with this diagram, the germs, these bacteria, when they combine with the um, leftover carbohydrates and sugars in your teeth, they create an acid. And it's this acid, when it bonds to the teeth, that starts to uh, trigger that demineralization. Plaque can form on teeth, as I said, just two to three hours after brushing and flossing. So it's important to practice good dental health throughout the day. Flossing can actually increase your lifespan by 6.4 years. It delays the effects of aging because it controls the uh, production of bacteria in your mouth and prevents it from spreading it from gum disease to different parts of your body. By flossing daily, you may be lowering your risk for heart disease, stroke, arterial sclerosis, and possibly cancer, which means that you can spend your golden years taking vacations instead of taking pills. I wanna take a look at one more picture of a tooth. On the right-hand side, you can see the diseased tooth with an abscess. An abscess is a pocket of pus. In this tooth, it's located at the apex or the root, the bottom of the tooth. It can surface at different, different points along the tooth as well. The abscess or infection in the tooth occurs when bacteria enters the tooth, either through a cavity, a crack in the tooth, or through the exposed dentin along the gum line. Once the bacteria enters the tooth, it can then uh, continue on through the blood system to different parts of our bodies. This next slide sums up the importance of dental health. Our dental health, or how we take care of our mouth, has an impact on our overall health of our body as well as our well being. Plaque and bacteria trigger the dental infections, which can then in turn trigger infections in different parts of our body, as we'll see in a couple slides, that affect our overall quality of life and health. Some of the consequences of poor oral health listed here are often not ones that we think about. But left untreated, some oral problems can lead to bad looking teeth or loss of teeth, changing a person's appearance to the extent that they're no longer comfortable going out in public. They don't want to smile. Smiling in our facial expressions is a large part of how we communicate with others. Decreased social interaction along with the changes in self-esteem can lead to depression. Mouth pain interferes with our ability to have healthy eating habits and have enough, get enough sleep per night. Problems can also develop with speech. Not eating healthy or, or getting enough sleep can impact different parts of our health as well. Gum disease and the oral bacteria produced from the gum disease leads to the chronic diseases, which we'll discuss in the next few slides. disease is the first chronic disease we'll take a look at. It is said that if you have gum disease, you're at a 50% higher risk of heart disease. Scientists are beginning to understand how this might be. It seems that bacteria produced from the mouth, as we saw in the earlier slides, enter the bloodstream through the gums. This oral bacteria then sticks to the flatty pl fatty plaques in the bloodstream, the cholesterol, directly contributing to blockages. Oral bacteria combined with the fatty deposits can further trigger an inflammatory response, causing the blood vessels to swell. This 
reduces the blood flow and increases the risk of a blockage even more. It also can contribute to the risk of clots. One of the bacteria, the oral bacteria that can circulate through the bloodstream mimics the body's normal response to create clotting. This bacteria will start attracting fibers to, it, fibers to itself to create a clot that's circulating in the bloodstream. This can lead to stroke. The buildup of oral bacteria in your bloodstream seems to have a negative effect on artificial heart valves, causing them to deteriorate over time. Bacteria in the mouth can also move to the lungs. When it moves to the lungs, it can erode the surface on the air sacs or alveoli in the lungs. Once these are irritated, the inflammation causes fluid to fill the lungs, leading to pneumonia. Bacteria from the upper throat can also be inhaled into the lower respiratory tract, causing infections. Diabetes. The relationship between gum disease and diabetes is a little bit like a chicken and the egg phenomenon. Each one seems to trigger the other. The high blood sugar resulting from diabetes can lead to a higher level of glucose in the saliva. This increases uh, plaque buildup potentially and also increasing inflammation. Gum disease causes the inflammation, which can also then in turn trigger increased glucose levels. Inflammation overall triggers increased levels of blood glucose, although we're not exactly sure how that works, but when that happens, the body's ability to use insulin is then compromised. People with diabetes are three, at a three times greater risk of gum disease. So it's important if you have diabetes to devote a little bit of extra attention to keeping your mouth clean because you're at a higher risk of bacteria buildup and infection. Dentin is the yellow soft tissue that we looked at earlier beneath the enamel. As our enamel on our teeth becomes stained or thinned, the, um, you can see the yellow dentin peeking through, which is responsible for the look that you see here. Darkened teeth can lead to our insecurity about our smiles, which may impact our ability and desire to go out and meet with others. An uneven jawbone is a little bit more of an extreme situation, but I wanted to show you because oftentimes an older adult may choose to have a tooth removed. And if the tooth is in the back of the mouth, you may they may choose not to put, uh, to replace it with an implant. Over time, teeth can tend to shift and into open spaces, creating an uneven jawbone that changes a person's appearance as you see here. The other problem with an uneven jawbone over time is that it changes your bite plate and it can interfere with your ability to digest your food in your mouth. Some age-related changes to dental health include arthritis in the hands, um, dry mouth created by taking some oral prescriptions and also cognitive disorders such as dementia causing them to forget to, to brush. The good news is there's some solutions to these. In the next slide, we'll take a look at some of the modifications you can make to your toothbrush at home that make it easier to hold on to. The most, probably the easiest of them you can see here is the use of a tennis ball, making an incision at either end and sliding your toothbrush through. It creates a, a wider surface that might be easier for you to grab. An electric toothbrush is another great option if you're able to hold onto it. You position the tooth, the bristles over your teeth where you need to to brush them and the bristles will do their work. You don't need to move your hands back and forth. Some of the other options you see here are a bicycle grip that someone stuck a toothbrush into 
or you can even create your own grip from clay and put in insert your toothbrush in it so it can be a nice malleable soft um, texture to hold on to there's various different types of floss and um, instruments with floss on them available to also help you get uh, access to your teeth and remove that bacteria dry mouth was initially thought of as a normal part of aging because so many older adults were affected by it it's now understood that it's largely caused by use of various medications the medications mostly responsible for dry mouth are actually those that are most common such as antidepressants decongestants antihistamines muscle relaxers appetite suppressants and diuretics so if you find that you're having a dry mouth check the label of your medication and see if dry mouth is in fact one of the side effects it's it, it oops it's important to try to combat dry mouth in order to understand why it's so important let's take a look at the value of saliva and its role in oral health saliva kills the bacteria viruses and fungi in our mouth it reduces the risk of cavities and gum disease and infection. It also neutralizes the acids that can demineralize our teeth. In fact, in the early stages of demineralization, the saliva can actually restore some of the minerals and prevent the, uh, the loss of enamel. Saliva moistens our mouth and makes it more easy for us to swallow our food. Overall, it works to clean our mouth. Without enough saliva, oral problems can quickly develop. Therefore, it's important to identify some strategies that might help you increase the saliva flow in your mouth. Sipping water frequently throughout the day will help provide a lubricant to remove or dislodge food particles after eating. Make sure that you travel with a water bottle, especially if you're out and about. Staying hydrated will also help your body maintain a higher water content used for saliva. You can use alcohol-free antiseptic mouthwashes that might help. Sucking on a sugar-free candy or chewing sugar-free gum can increase the saliva flow to your mouth. And also eating certain foods such as apples, celery, or carrots can increase the saliva flow to your mouth. Sensitive teeth can be a challenge. Sensitive teeth occur when the, the dentin or soft portion of the tooth is exposed. The purpose, the purpose of enamel is to protect that soft portion so that it is um, not exposed to hot, cold, or acid or spicy sensations from the food that we eat. The dentin contains small canals in its surface that lead to the nerve endings. This is why you, when you consume certain foods and they come into contact with the dentin, they, go, they flow through the small channels in the dentin and reach the nerve endings that trigger that sensitivity. Some strategies to work around that can in, involve the use of certain mouthwashes. Overall, make sure that you step up your um, cleaning routine and ensure that bacteria and food particles are not left exposed in that pocket, which can also trigger greater bacteria and infection in the tooth. Certain te uh, toothpaste that is designed for sensitive teeth may help using two mechanisms. The sensitive toothpaste are designed to calm the nerve endings in the tooth, and they're also designed to develop a protective layer over the dentin over time. The items on this list for good dental care are nothing that we haven't taken a look at before. But as a reminder, we want to make sure to brush twice a day with a soft bristled toothbrush and toothpaste with fluoride, which helps guard against the demineralization and loss of enamel in your teeth. You may want to consider uh, switching to an electric toothbrush. 
They're fast and easy and do a great job of scrubbing your teeth without irritating your gums based on if how you're how you're positioning it. Along those lines, you may want to consider adapting your own toothbrush so that it's easier for you to grab. You're more going to be more likely to put off brushing your teeth if your hands are are sore. So make sure that that's not no longer a reason that would stand in your way. Using an antiseptic mouthwash once a day is helpful to, again to dislodge food particles, especially after lunch or somewhere where you find that you don't have uh, access to a toothbrush. If you wear full or partial dentures, make sure you take them out at least four hours a day to clean adequately. Putting dentures back in your mouth without um, properly removing food, removing food particles and bacteria can aggravate and cause infections in your gums. You may want to consider drinking tap water rather than bottled water because it does contain fluoride. Smoking can actually increase your risk of gum disease by three times. So clearly by eliminating smoking, you're doing a lot in terms of creating a dent better dental care for yourself. With all that said, make sure that you still visit your dentist on a regular basis so that they can check and make sure that under the surface that your efforts are working. Oftentimes you may have some genetic predisposition, predisposition to deep pockets or circumstances that make you more uh, or at a higher risk for the buildup of bacteria. Dental care is based on a prevention. Most often large bills, dental bills can be avoided by early detection and diagnosis of cavities. The last tip for good oral health are smart food choices. Several of the items listed here contain items that help you reduce inflammation in your mouth and maintain healthy tissues. The vitamin C found in kiwi and strawberries slows down the breakdown of collagen and the connective tissue around the teeth. Sulfur in raw onions can help kill ba um, bacteria in your mouth. Seems to be almost an oxymoron because typically we think onions give us bad breath, when in fact they actually help to reduce the bacteria that contributes to oral um, gum disease. Uh, there's an element in mushrooms that also helps the gingivitis. Celeries, fruits and vegetables that are crunchy like celery, carrots, and apples actually act as a mini toothbrush. If you eat them after your meal, they can stimulate saliva production, which helps dislodge the food particles and clean your mouth. They can also stimulate gums and, and act as a toothbrush to get the extra food particles out. Dairy contributes vitamin D and protein, which, are, which is important to healthy bone and tooth development. Cheese lovers will love, it the fact, will love the fact that there's an enzyme in cheese that when you chew it, it produces more saliva. I'm not giving you free reign to eat large amounts of cheese because cheese contains typically a lot of fat as well. However, it does seem to have a health benefit in moderation for saliva production and tooth health tooth health. Although none of the recommendations for good dental health that we've covered are new to you, I'm hoping that you've gained a better understanding of why they are important. And even more importantly, how your daily choices of, of caring for your teeth directly impact not only your oral health, but your overall health and well-being. Thank you for joining us. And if you have any further questions, please don't hesitate to reach out to the Villages Health Learning Center. Thank you.